This is lesson three on properties of solids. In this lesson, students will build on the skills that they learned in the previous lesson about measuring volume using the graduated cylinder. Um, the first part of the lesson is creating a balance scale, and we do have other resources on the website which will show you how to do that if you need assistance with that. Um, it's a fun experiment for the students. It is not being assessed, so if you do need to bring in help with parent volunteers, please feel free to do that. That's not part of what's being assessed on here. It's just a good hands-on opportunity for the students. If you're doing the lesson in two parts, you will stop after creating the balance scale, and then we will start with the next part right now. So the first thing students will do is they will use the balance scale to find the mass of different objects that they used in lesson two. They will do that by using the one gram washers and they will measure the same objects that they took volume measurements on in the previous lesson. They will record those in the student workbook and they will also use the information from the workbook in the previous lesson to fill in the, fill in the graph with the mass and volume of all of the different objects. There's a good graphic in the student workbook that explains how density is determined. It shows both mass, volume, and density so that students understand the relationship of those three. This will help them understand where the formula comes from that density is mass divided by volume. After they have found the density of the items that they used in lesson two, it will be time for the penny challenge. The preparation you'll want to do ahead of time is to make stacks of pennies in the foil. You will have the same number of pennies in each stack. Some are pre-1982, the others are post-1982. Um, because they are made with different materials, they will be different sizes. We're just not telling the students ahead of time which they are. The students are going to try to determine which are the most dense. The first thing students will do is they will need to find the mass of the stack of pennies. They will use their balance scale to do that by placing the stack in one side and then placing the one gram washers in the other side until it balances. I'm holding this here. When the students are doing it, it will actually be taped to their desk. Once they've determined that it is balanced, they will record the number of washers in their workbook. In this case, it would be four grams. The next thing students will need to do is repeat the same skill that they learned previously about finding the volume using the graduated cylinder. They'll use the same stack that they just, that they just measured the mass of, and they will use their graduated cylinder to find that volume. In this case, the volume of the stack that I have is three milliliters. Next, they will do the density formula in their workbook in order to find the density of that stack. They will repeat this with the second stack, and then what they will need to do is record their data and their results in the student workbook. Um, let them know ahead of time that they will need to have their prediction of which is the most dense, either the pre or post 1982 pennies. They will need to have that prediction written in here ahead of time before they can unwrap to determine which it was. This lesson does a really good job of showing the integration of math and English language arts with science. Um, they're doing a lot of measuring, data collection, as well as the writing for their results, and then there are vocabulary lessons at the end as well. Remember, you can refer to the addendum, the teacher's addendum, for more information on